Now I'm going to give you a bit of time here to absorb these figures. Now, um, a, a, a word of warning, we've, uh, we've taken these prices straight from the internet, uh, looking at the European market and also looking at the US market. So when we look at these prices, we're not just taking a UK cartridge cost uh, and converting to US or vice versa. What we've actually done here is let's say in the case of the Epson R3000, all of these are desktop inkjet printers. And in the case of the Epson R3000, we're looking at buying a, a, a genuine OEM cartridge containing 26 millilitres of ink, and we're paying £18.32 plus taxes, which in our case is VAT. In the US market, a competitive online price is $31.49 for a 26 millilitre ink. So what we've done is we've tried to equal out what we're doing here. We need to know how much we're paying per litre. So in the case of the R3000, we've bought the cartridge for 1832. We're buying 26 millilitres of ink. Remember that we're not necessarily going to use all of that ink. And the calculation is that for 18 pounds 32 for 26 mil, for a litre, it works out at an equivalent 704 pounds. In the US market, we're buying a cartridge containing 26 millilitres of ink for $31.49. That works out at an equivalent of $1,211 per litre. We're looking down on our medium format popular printer here, which is the current uh, popular Epson printer is the Pro 3880. We're buying the cartridge in the UK for $41.09 plus taxes for 80 millilitres, which works out at an equivalent of 513 pounds per litre. In the US market, we buy our 80 mil cartridge for $62.95, and that works out to be 786.87 per litre. See how the price is gradually coming down, which is a good thing. Epson are, are doing the right thing there by making wide format, and the more uh, uh, ink that you're buying and the, the, to be fair the, 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 the litre price is coming down. Let's now go to the most popular wide format printer the Pro 7900. We're buying a 350ml cartridge, a much bigger cartridge for £106 plus taxes which works out to be £305 a litre and in the US market we're buying our 350ml cartridge for $160 uh, plus taxes and that works out to be 457 so we can see how the how the desktop uh, inkjet price comes down to medium format and then comes down even further to wide format and the same for the UK for the UK market so that's that's desktop that's medium format and that's wide format now let's go across to a typical third-party professional photographic ink we in order to use these inks, you would use either uh, a continuous ink system in your desktop printer, but for medium format and wide format, and nowadays you also have this option for desktop printers, you might also use uh, refill cartridges. So you buy the refill cartridges, and then you have your, uh, your inks. Now in the case of desktop inks, in case of desktop printers, you would buy... Uh, probably uh, your ink in, in bottles of 125 mil, which is four ounces in the US market. For medium format, you would buy your ink in 250 mil, uh, and the US market is eight ounce, that's the equivalent. And for wide format, usually you don't mess around, you go straight to a, to, uh, a litre, which in the US market is 32 ounces. So those are the three typical volumes of ink that you would buy for the various markets. Now let's look for a 125 mil ink in the UK market, a typical third party professional ink would be around 20 pounds plus taxes per, for 125 
and that gives you an equivalent of 160 pounds per litre. Now let's compare that to our litre price here. Can you see the difference between desktop OEM cartridge inks and our uh, bottle price? It's a lot cheaper. When we're looking at our desktop price for uh, the US market, we'd be buying a four ounce bottle of good quality professional photographic ink for about $30 plus taxes. And then that transfers across here to our litre price of, two, of $239, around $240 per litre. Now compare that to our US uh, uh, OEM cartridge price of around $1,200 you've got a huge difference in price per, per, uh, per litre. Let's look at the medium format price. So we're buying a 250 ml, a quarter litre of ink for 29.13 plus taxes. We then transfer that price across and that works out to be 116 pounds a litre uh, plus VAT. Let's compare that to the, to the UK uh, OEM brand price, you can see this now. Can you see this difference in price? It's a huge difference in price. We'll then look at the US market. You're buying your uh, eight ounce bottle of good quality professional photographic ink for around $50 plus taxes, which transfers to be around $200 a litre. Now let's compare that to our medium format US price of around $800. So you've got $800 there, $200 there. And finally, we're looking at our wide format price for the UK market. We'd be buying a litre of ink for $95.95, which of course is £95 per litre. Let's compare that to the OEM brand price. You can see the, the, the difference there. We're looking at about a third of the price. And in the US market for wide format, we're buying a 32 ounce bottle, which is a litre, give or take. We're buying a 32 ounce bottle for $150 here, pretty well, $144 uh, plus taxes, which works out, of course, to $144 a litre. Let's compare that to the US wide format cartridge price. It's easily three times as, uh, three times as expensive. So this this uh, little spreadsheet here, which we've researched very, very carefully for the present time, which is March uh, 2014, this is our comparison that we see uh, 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 at, uh, as, uh, as competitive online prices uh, uh, at this point in time. <coughs> Now from these comparisons in both the European market and the US marketplace, I personally take the view that on average, a good quality third party professional photographic inkjet ink can be up to one fifth of the price of OEM brand ink in desktop printers and conservatively around one third of the price of OEM brand ink in medium and wide format printers. There are times, however, when I would not change from brand OEM ink cartridges. Now, in my opinion, there are two clear cases where you would not change from the brand OEM inks to uh, the slight complication of, uh, uh, of, of bulk inks whether you're using a continuous ink system on a desktop printer like this, this is the Epson R3000, or refill cartridges for your desktop printer, or for medium format and wide format, you generally tend to use uh, 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 refill cartridges. So the two cases that I would be cautious with, first of all, if you're only printing low weekly volumes. Now my definition of low weekly volumes is about half a dozen uh, uh, A4 or 11 by uh, eight and a half uh, um, for desktop printing. If I, was, if I was running a medium format printer, I'd be looking at something under uh, six A3 uh, prints, which is 11 by 17, or under, under six 
wide format prints, which would be something something of A2 or over, uh, something like uh, 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 something something like uh, 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 half a dozen A2s. Now the second uh, the second uh, uh, the, 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 the second um, uh, issue there would be that if you need to keep your printing operations very simple. Now maybe it may be an issue of age or your lack of competence uh, or you've got many different users using the same printer. It may not be such a good idea to have bulk inks. Now when we're talking about age, now I'm, uh, I'm getting on a bit now, but I still feel confident about my ability to transfer ink and also do the little bit of simple colour management to get a fabulous bit of, uh, of colour and black and white. But, you know, I think we have to be honest with ourselves. As we, get, um, as we do get older, it may be a situation where it's a sensible thing just to keep things simple and stay with the uh, OEM brand inks. In the case of lack of competence, again, I think we've got to be honest with ourselves. Do we feel confident enough to change from the Epson brand inks or Canon brand inks, the OEM brand inks, across to a, uh, to a, a bulk ink system? But there, we, I do have to say that uh, not only our own, but also uh, there are plenty of professional photographic ink suppliers out there that do provide excellent technical support, not only on email, but also over the phone, and pretty well all of our fellow suppliers in the industry, they, they won't let you fail. Once you've bought the product, uh, uh, they, they, they simply won't, won't let you fail. Uh, the third case is, is when you have many different users of the same printer. Now, in this case, I'm thinking of a play, uh, something like uh, in a school or a college where you've got lots of little hands getting involved in printing. Well, then again, um, I, we supply lots and lots of schools and colleges, and we do find that the, that the, the printer is actually um, dedicated for a particular class, and usually the ink handling and the setup of the printer is usually handled by the uh, by the technical uh, by the technician that's uh, that's covering the course, and the actual pupils don't get involved on the ink side at all. So that's usually what tends to happen in an educational environment, and you can't deny the huge economic advantages of using uh, of using bulk inks. Now let's go forward now to the next section, which is uh, ink handling. How to correctly handle modern pigment inks. Now pigment inks are easy to handle in cartridge form. Usually the ink outlet is protected by a sprung-loaded poppet valve, which shuts off the ink flow if the cartridge is removed from your printer. Inks supplied in bottle form present certain extra issues. The first thing is you must keep this ink away from children. It's an obvious precaution. We supply our ink in watertight uh, plastic tubs, and it's a good idea to keep your inks uh, um, in these uh, tubs uh, as, and you keep it away somewhere safe. When transferring ink, number two, use correct size funnel. When transferring ink, always use the correct size funnel or syringe. Number three, when transferring ink, be aware of the possibility of spillage. Try to arrange your ink transfer area over a drip tray or a draining board or a sink or even a bit of plastic. You've laid a bit of plastic down just to be on the safe side. Number four, be aware of the danger of splashing ink or flicking ink onto your brand new shirt or your trousers. Whenever I work in our ink filling rooms, I always wear a disposable plastic apron and latex gloves, which you can get from us. Number five, check your ink expiry and manufacturing dates on your inks. If you don't understand the markings on your inks, do ask your supplier for clarification. A common industry shelf life for pigment inks is two years, with a proviso that you should use the inks within six months of opening. 
These figures are usually pretty conservative, but they do indicate that it is not a good idea to buy way more ink than you need for a particular period of use. If you're buying ink for a desktop printer, 125 millilitres, which is two ounces, is the usual maximum size to buy at any one time. For medium and wide format printers, ask your supplier for their best 250ml or 500ml or 1 litre bottle price. The more you buy, the cheaper it becomes, but you want to bear in mind the shelf life of your ink stocks. Now, all the bulk inks that we sell, whether Lyson or Marat own brand, are heat sealed with a foil top. This keeps the inks secure, keeps them fresh and allows a method of ink transfer which I feel is cleaner and safer than pouring. You use a syringe with the transfer tube to pierce the foil, draw up the required ink and you transfer into, the, into your refill cartridge or your ink reservoir. It's always a good idea when you're transferring ink to take your time. If you transfer your ink too quickly, you encourage the generation of bubbles, and bubbles are one of the main enemies of good, uh, uh, reliable inkjet printing. So take your time when you transfer ink across from the bottle to the reservoir or from the bottle to the refill cartridge, and just very slowly uh, uh, transfer your ink in. Just take your time. Now, uh, maximise profit by minimising waste. This is very important because we want, we're here for profit. We want to make money out of printing. Uh, now, professional photographic inks are among the most expensive liquids you will ever buy. It makes sense to save and use every single drop. Now, my advice is, first of all, never use the cleaning cycle on your printer unless absolutely necessary. Instead of doing a, a, a nozzle check, uh, instead of doing a, a, a head clean, print out a few coloured prints, let's say half a dozen A4 or US letter prints at full resolution instead. That will pull the ink through just as well and it will use a fraction of the ink. If you're thinking you need to perform a head clean, uh, uh, contact your ink supplier. That they far prefer you to contact them if you've got a problem early on than struggle on your own. It's far better that you contact your ink supplier straight away because they will have the experience to know what to do straight away. Remember, five head cleans uh, can empty a, a set of, of uh, OEM brand cartridges. Now, how about that for avoidable waste? The second issue is uh, illustrated here. Where it, whenever I visit a printing studio, I, I just can't help myself. I look in the waste bin for evidence of wasted prints. Eliminate the most expensive element of every individual job, the failed attempts at a finished saleable product. Now, you should practice with small test prints before your full-sized print run. That way, you keep your, your waste bin uh, 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 empty. Now, finally, the last uh, section here is uh, a few little warnings. Now, you never do this. There, here's a few points to consider when using professional photographic inkjet inks. If you ever lose the essential identification on a bottle of ink, don't be tempted to take a chance and use that ink anyway. If you make a mistake, you will compromise the entire colour channel and therefore spoil your colour accuracy. And when you top up with hopefully the correct ink next time round, your colours will change over time. I will cover this issue at length in the, in the fourth lesson, which is colour management and process control. It's vital that all your colour channels are consistent and never vary with respect to each other. If you take a chance and get away with it, this is still bad practice because you're opening the door to further errors in the future. Second issue is mixing ink brands or using an ink left over from another printer, using out-of-date ink, diluting ink, 
These adulterations of an otherwise pure and pristine product should never be attempted. Number three, as mentioned earlier in this course, dust is the main enemy of inkjet printing. I will let you in on one of the worst crimes in ink handling. Let's say your studio has just had the carpets vacuumed, plenty of dust is hanging in the air, and you start to fill cartridges or ink reservoirs, then you get distracted and you leave an entire bottle of inkjet ink uncovered for 10 minutes or more. You can consider that bottle of ink contaminated and you must throw it away. Now always look for any way your valuable inks may get contaminated and, and, and just cut that practice out. The golden rule is never to waste, never contaminate and never lose identification. Now finally, uh, in my opinion, the most important colour when evaluating photographic inkjet inks is black. The ability to render a good rich black which lifts off early and graduates with smooth, smooth tones and evenly modifies your primary colours is of great importance to the final print. I always start off with my print evaluations by judging the quality of the black that the ink set is capable of. I advise you to let that issue be your first point of reference when inkjet printing. Remember always that when using modern pigment inks, you usually have a choice between matte black ink and photo black. Now if you get this wrong, you will only ever create dark grey in your prints and you won't create a good rich black. Use matte black ink for printing on matte inkjet paper finishes, including fine art matte papers or canvas matte uh, 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 papers. Use photo black ink for printing on glossy, semi-gloss, luster or, or glossy canvas. Any finish which carries a slight sheen or gloss to the paper finish, you must remember to use photo black ink to achieve a good rich black. Now the finer points of colour and monochrome printing will be, will be dealt with in our final two lessons, colour printing masterclass and black and white printing masterclass. But in our next lesson in the series, we will learn the importance of a clean, pure, high white in our choice of production photographic inkjet papers. Remember, we never have white ink. So we looked at our inks for our blacks and we looked to our papers for our whites. Now we'll see you next time in lesson three, professional photographic inkjet paper essentials. Thank you for watching.